Funny Girl 1968 was directed by William Wyler and was adapted from the original Broadway musical by Isabel Leonard to a screenplay also by Leonard. The film came right at the beginning of the rebirth of cinema and almost 20 years after the peak of musical movies, just in time for a new generation to enjoy it. Many musicals during this period featured such elaborate and costly sets and other production design elements that they only broke even or even at times had a deficit. But even with a budget of over 14 million, Funny Girl had a box office net earning of $38 million, meaning it was a huge success. The film takes place in the early 1900s and stars Barbara Streisand as Fanny Bryce, a young Jewish girl who would give an arm and a leg to become a star performer in one of Florence Ziegfeld's musicals. As she begins her attempted path to success, Fanny meets Nick Arnstein, played by Omar Sharif. Nick is a successful gambler who seems to have an eye for unique talent, and as the movie progresses, we see Fanny and Nick facing various challenges in their relationship and beyond over the next several years of their lives. Especially important is how Fanny deals with the conflicts in her life, as she's very stubborn and strong-willed, but also soft on the inside. Touching on themes of family, romance, and even criminal activity in this dramatic musical, Funny Girl takes you on a journey of the life of Fanny Bryce as one of the most unexpectedly talented performers of her time. William Wyler had directed dozens of films throughout the silent and sound eras before directing Funny Girl. However, this was his first musical, and he almost declined the job due to being deaf in one ear. However, after meeting the enigmatic Barbara Streisand and seeing her great personality, he decided to give directing a musical a chance. The film was nominated for several Oscars, including Best Picture. However, it only won one, and that was Barbara Streisand for Leading Actress. Her voice is undeniably unique, and any other performances of Fanny Bryce are certainly incomparable to hers. I think that this is in part because Streisand is so similar to her character. She's always ready to spin a serious question from a news outlet into a joke when needed, and was often noted for her tendency to take on a director's role during the film's production, which is exactly something Fanny Bryce would have done and did do at times under Ziegfeld's direction in the film. Streisand's spot-on portrayal of Fanny was definitely an enjoyable part of the movie for me. Some of the things the film is often praised for are its outstanding soundtrack and extreme set design. Huge sets were a great part of this film because they were so elaborate and showed off many of the lavish livings of Fanny Bryce and also, of course, the actual onstage musical performances that she was in. The way that they were shot also sold it to me because of some of the performances revealing things in certain orders and showing off things in a funny way. I got to see how the camera work would play into that role of portraying and revealing details. When we're on stage, we get the crowd's point of view and at dinner time and in the home, we get a good look at the lifestyle of Fanny's family and her new life with Nick. And one particular scene I really enjoyed was Fanny's witty responses to the news reporters trying to trip her up with their questions. The camera captioned her emotions just right throughout this whole sequence and surrounding it. That part of the story was definitely very emotionally convincing for me. However, this film is also lacking in a number of ways. In my opinion, there's no really strong central story or focal point. You could start or end the movie at any point and not take away anything different overall. Because of that, the film really dragged on for me after the first hour. I feel like it would have been a better picture overall with a runtime just 30 to 45 minutes shorter than its current two and a half hours. The writing of Nick's character was also a little bit flat, unfortunately, and I found it hard to connect with his character. Now that's not to say that the film was horrible to watch, and there were definitely some elements I really liked, like the theme of someone who's not conventionally attractive being valued for both her beauty and for her personality. Walter Pidgeon also gave a great performance of Florence Ziegfeld as the musical's director throughout the film. Overall, I would proceed with caution if you're considering of watching this film. Their performances are great, but the story is just not up to a T in my opinion. I hope that that gives you some insight on Funny Girl 1968. Thanks for watching.